Winter activities can be a lot of fun, but it's important to be prepared and dress properly for the cold conditions. That is because being cold can affect our balance and increase our risk of accidents. In today's episode, we'll take a look at whether our legs getting cold can affect our balance. And if it does, is there a difference depending on which part of our legs get cold? Snowboarding and skiing are all great wintertime activities that keep us active and enjoying the outdoors. These sports all rely on being able to keep our balance in a very dynamic situation, with high speeds over constantly changing snow surfaces. Even with a slower speed, snowshoeing or just walking over icy sidewalks also show off our incredible ability to balance on two feet in a very dynamic setting. But does our ability to keep our balance get worse if our body temperature starts dropping? This would seem to be especially important if our legs get cold, as our sense of balance relies on getting proper sensory signals from our feet and legs to our brains, and then obviously on our legs being flexible enough and strong enough to keep our bodies upright. A second question to ask is whether it matters how much of our legs become cold. Is getting cold feet enough by itself to worsen our balance, or does it only happen with much more of our legs getting cold? In 2015, our lab decided to test this question. We had a control condition where the leg wasn't cooled, and experimental conditions where we cooled the leg up to the ankle, knee, or hip for 10 minutes in 12 degrees Celsius water. This might be similar to what happens when you sit on a chairlift before your ski run. Then, we measured deep muscle temperature of the calf and the thigh. The main test was the Star Excursion Balance Test, where you kept your hands on your hips, did a squat on one leg, then reached as far forward or as far backwards as you could with the other leg. This is a well-known test used to study strength and balance in athletes. What do we find? On the left, we see a graph of the thigh, calf, and core temperatures over the four conditions. We see that core temperature didn't change with any of the cooling conditions. As expected, ankle cooling didn't affect calf or thigh temperature. Also as expected, calf temperature dropped when we cooled up to the knee or hip, and thigh temperature dropped only when we cooled up to the hip. On the right graph, we have the balanced test results. For both reaching forward and backwards, we see that balance was the same with control, ankle, or knee cooling, but got worse with hip cooling. So it seems that we can keep our balance as normal as long as we don't end up cooling our whole leg, especially the large muscles of the thigh and hamstrings. Overall, the message from the study seems to be that cold feet are uncomfortable, but cold legs are dangerous. So the first important lesson is to keep our legs warm. Many of us will wear a warm jacket, but just regular pants out in the cold. So we should remember to put on long thermal underwear too during the winter. Second, if you're an athlete, you want to make sure you are warmed up before exercising. So when you get off that chairlift, think about maybe doing some jumping jacks before starting your ski run. Finally, clothing designers can focus on maintaining upper leg temperature rather than evenly insulating the whole lower body. I hope that you've enjoyed this cold, hard look into the fascinating world of environmental physiology. I'm Professor Stephen Chung, and I run the Environmental Ergonomics Lab in the Department of Kinesiology at Brock University. We post new videos on different topics in environmental physiology every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.